think we are close, Sam. What do you think? Should we get started? I think so. I know Sam's excited. I'm excited. Hopefully you're all excited about tonight. This is our 4-H Rockets Away. So we're excited that you're with us this evening. Um, again, if you're here for something else, you can stay with us. But this is the 4-H Rockets Away um, that we're doing this year. And we're going to start with some quick introductions. So my name is Brian McNeil. I'm an extension educator. I work out of the Morris Regional Office, if you know where Morris is. And I work with a lot of STEM programming. So if you see things with STEM, um, I do a lot of stuff with STEM stuff. And I'll have Sam introduce himself. Hey, Brian, what's STEM? That's a great question. Anybody know what STEM is? You can put it in the chat. As you're typing, yes, it is science, technology, engineering, and math. So that's what I work with. And now, Sam. Okay, I am Sam Jens. I am the extension educator in Lyon County, Minnesota, which if you don't know where that's at, that's Marshall, Minnesota, in the southwest corner of the state. And I do a lot of after-school programming and summer programming around STEM. And then there's a third person that'll be with us, um, Suzanne Souza. She's also an extension educator out of the Big Stone County office, which is uh, Ortonville, Clinton area, that type of thing. So um, the three of us will be leading the next um, four times with our Rockets Away program. So again, welcome. We're glad that you're with us. We're going to start, as we do a lot with our 4-H activities, uh, with the flag pledge. So it's written there. But if you want to do the hand gestures with me, I'll recite the, the pledge. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And if you're a 4-H member, we always have follow, follow up with our 4-H pledge. And if you're not, again, we've got the words there for you. You can read along with us. If you know the hand gestures, you can do that along with me as well. So I pledge my head to clear thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my family, my club, my community, my country, and my world. All right. And we've got some um, reminders we want to kind of walk through. So make sure through the night just to stay muted. Um, there will be some times we'll ask you to unmute, but if you want to stay muted for right now, um, that would be great. Uh, you can turn your cameras on. Uh, it's it's really nice to see your faces and what and what you're doing. So if you've got the ability, uh, throw your camera on so we can see who you are and what you're doing. Um, if you have questions, raise your hand. And I see we've got one raised already. So thank you for that. Um, if you want to, you can always change your name. Um, like I said before, if you want to change so we know who you are. If you can't figure that out or that type of thing, don't worry about it. You're just fine. If you want, you can have some fun and change your background. And please use the chat for questions. I'll be watching that as Sam's leading um, the activity and bringing any for any questions forward um, through the chat. So that's kind of our reminders there. And you all received a kit, um, hopefully, before our evening this night. And so we kind of want to walk through real quick what's in your kit. So you should have received a box. And inside your box, and Sam's going to hold up different objects for me as I talk. Thanks, Sam. You should get this little white box like this. And inside the box, there's a variety of things. There's um, a booklet that has all of the kind of the step-by-step -step instructions, some other reference materials that we'll be talking about. So there's the Rocket Away booklet there. Um, for you to use through our sessions. Then we've got some lots of odds and ends. Like there's a CD in there. There's, um, I'm gonna hold that up, Sam. That's a CD. Yep, right there. Just a round. If you don't know, it's a compact disc. That's what CD stands for. Then there's a little water bottle top thing in there. Um, yep, Sam was cleaning out his drawers and threw all this stuff from his drawers into this little box for you all. Um, I think there's a balloon in there. Yep. There should be a couple of size of straws. There should be one a little bit bigger, one a little smaller straw. Sam is doing a great job being Vanna here for me. And then oh. if you watch Wheel of Fortune, 
Then there's going to be like a little square piece of paper that's like sticking mailing labels, just what Sam's holding. So we'll be using that. So keep those handy. Um, there's also like a film canister. And if you don't know what a film canister is, because they're kind of obsolete anymore, it's around, it almost looks like a little garbage can. Um, so that should be in your kit. And then I think there's a ping pong ball, which we'll be using next week. So make sure you keep your ping pong balls close to you. And what else, Sam, do we got in there? Oh, yes, there is a rocket. So in our last time together, we will be building a rocket together. Um, so if you want to keep that closed so you don't lose any of the pieces, um, would be really great. So make sure if you've opened it, that's okay. Just make sure the pieces don't fall out or you misplace them because we'll be using those on our last time to do actually the build. So all those pieces in that kit we'll be using each time. Like I said, next time we'll be using the ping pong ball. Well, I we've got that at our end slide, so I'm going to hold off with that. We'll kind of remind you what you need for our next time. So make sure you have your kit handy with you every time we meet because the resources are in there to use um, with our time together. And I see Nathaniel has his hand up. My mom ordered two kits, one for me and my sister. How come there's only one of each size of straw? All your stuff should be in one box, Nathaniel. So both you and your sister's stuff should be in there. There should be two sizes of straw. One's a smaller one and one's a bigger one. Yeah, I just thought that we wouldn't have two smaller and two bigger. Because we got the doubles of everything else. But you did oh. get doubles of straws. Yeah. We'll try to get those to you. And if not, you can share. All right. So that's kind of enough on our kits. Again, have those handy with you for our next times that we meet. Now we're going to get right into our activity here. So I'm going to turn it over to Sam, and he's going to talk about what's going to happen here. Oh, oh, today we're going to learn about flight through paper airplanes. And I have a couple of quiz questions for you that I want to see what your guys' thoughts are. I'm going to ask you to put them in the chat. So the Guinness Book of World Records uh, has a world record for the farthest flight. How far do you think the farthest paper airplane flew? Put it in the chat. How many feet? Ooh, 306 meters. 15 feet, 50 feet, 326 feet. 113 feet. Those are great guesses. I'm uh, not real sure if uh, Brian can do some quick math for me, but um, the farthest flight um, actually was recorded on December 2nd, 2022. Just a few months ago, this record was broken from a group of people out of Indiana, and they flew 290 feet. Uh, so that's a long ways. Uh, um. And then it took them 400 hours to prepare and be able to fly that plane. And it took them 20 minutes to fold their plane. That's a long time. It's not going to take us 20 minutes to fold any of our planes today. Uh, and then the longest a, fl a plane stayed afl afloat before it hit the ground. How many seconds do you think the longest flight has been? I'm going to put those in the chat. 126 seconds. 872 seconds. 260 seconds. 12.5. 45. 30. 10 minutes. 60 seconds. 2 minutes. Oh, let's go back up here because we had a really close one. Nathaniel was very close with 30 seconds. The record for the longest flight is 29.2 seconds. And that happened in 2006 from a person from Japan. Just a little bit of flight history for you. So as we're building airplanes, if you guys want to try to break those Guinness Book of World Records, you sure can. They're always looking for a new record holder. 
Uh, but they were going to work on building two different types of paper airplanes. We're going to build the basic dart and the hunting. Uh, and when we're building this, one of the biggest things that we want to look at, at with, with paper airplanes is symmetry. Uh, so symmetry just simply means that both sides of a half are equal or as close to equal as possible. Because the more symmetrical that our plane is today, the easier it will be for it to fly and fly straight. Um, so we're going to build the basic dart first. And I have a short little video. If Brian wants to click on it, it'll take us through how to build it quick. And then we will build one together. Today I'm going to show you how to create this iconic paper plane called the basic dart. To begin, fold the paper in half vertically and then reopen. Take both corners and fold them into the center crease. Now repeat. Please the rewind part. the video. I couldn't keep up. Fold it's okay. We're going to just watch the video quick of uh, the overview how to do it, and then we're going to fold one together. Take both corners and fold them into the center crease. Now repeat the last step with the outer corners. Now fold the plane in half. With a ruler, fold down the first wing starting at the peak. And finally, fold down the second wing. And this is what the basic dart should look like. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. So if you want to go ahead and unfair for a minute, or a few minutes. So we are going to build the basic dart together. So does everybody have a sheet of paper? It looks like Nathaniel already has one. Okay, so I'm going to slide over here to my camera where I have, have a sheet of paper. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to fold this sheet of paper in half. And so we want to fold it the hot dog way or the long way of the piece of paper. So we want to fold it this way. And we want to take our time folding the piece of paper, make sure that our corners match like that. And I like to pinch one side. And then I like to come back over to the other side and pinch that side. Then come to the center and pinch it. And then I like to lay it down and fold it. That gets for me the closest I can get. And you can see I'm off a little bit right here and that on the bottom. And maybe you can't see that. Maybe if I bring it up, you can see I'm off a little bit. I want to try to fix that before we go any farther. Because remember, I said we, we're going to use symmetry. So we want everything to be as even as possible. So we got our sheet of paper folded in half. And Brian, I'm going to kind of ask that you kind of watch chat a little bit. If I am start going too fast for anybody, uh, that uh, I can slow down or backtrack. So then we're going to open our sheet of paper up. Right, so it'll kind of look like a book as we as we open this up. And we're going to take one corner and fold it to the center. And I like to make as sharp a lines as possible when I fold this. So I like to use my fingernail and really give it a sharp crease. Um, something that the video showed, if you want, you can use a ruler to, to help with that. That'll help with a crease too, if you have one. And once you have one side done, we're going to repeat. And we want to make sure that our two points come together and match evenly. And again, I like using my fingernail to kind of crease it a little bit. Okay. Sam, it so looks like we've got an expert pilot in here. Nathaniel said he can make his does loop-de-loop. -loop. So we'll oh, have to awesome. see if he can make that happen. 
All right, so now that we have that done, we're going to fold it in on itself. And this is where we're going to check the symmetry again to make sure that everything looks nice and even so our lines line up on, on the edges where it's not folded. And then we're going to take one side and we're going to fold it down to the, to the bottom part of the plane once. And we want to take our time and fold on there. Again, I like using my fingernail, get that nice sharp crease of a fold. And once we have that, we're just going to flip it over and do the same thing. So we want to be down and even on here, but we also want to check the other side to make sure that our tops are even as close as possible too. Because again, that's all about the symmetry of the paper airplane. Now that we have a, a right angle triangle, right, this is considered a right angle triangle because it makes one right angle out of it. We'll get a little uh, geometry lesson with this too today. Right, we're going to take our paper airplane and we're going to fold it down one more time to the bottom edge. And fold on it. And we'll flip it over and we want to make sure that those top edges of the line again. Sometimes it helps to when you're starting out to kind of hold it up in the air. And you can see I'm getting those top edges nice and even. And then you can fold that back up. And there's your dart. Once you're done, if you want to hold your paper airplane up to the camera so we can see that you have your dart made. Awesome. Seeing lots of darts, Sam. I am. Oh, do you think we should put the plane off to the side now, or do you think we should give it a test flight? I think we should test fly it. I think we should test fly it, too. Airplanes um, that you can build that are made for acrobatics. So they're made to do loop-de-loops and circles and stuff like that up in the air. Tyler, Sam? I think so. So the next one that we're going to build is called the Hunting. And Brian, if you want to show the short how-to video quick. I don't, I don't think that's the plane, Brian. This fast and straight shooting paper plane called hunting flight. First, you're going to fold the sheet of paper in half vertically. Next, you're going to unfold and then fold the top edge down about two inches. And remember, we're going to watch the video quick and then we'll we'll build it all together so everybody will be able to build it together. Edge and fold it down again to the end of the previous fold. Now you'll repeat the previous step one last time. Next, you're going to turn the sheet around and take the top two corners and fold them to the center line. I suggest using a ruler for these steps because the top edge is thick and hard to fold. There, now turn the plane around again and fold it in half. Next, I'm going to use the ruler again to fold down each wing at an angle like I'm doing here. I'm going to fold the other wing down to match the edge of the first one. And this is what it should look like. Finally, I'm going to fold the edge of each wing up about a half an inch.
and that's how you fold the hunting flight. Okay, do you think we can build this? I mean, I have confidence in you that you can build this. Okay. Okay, let's get at it. So we have our green sheet of paper again. We are going to fold it in half the same way as we folded the basic dart. So hot dog light. And remember that symmetry. We want to keep everything as even as possible. Let me make sure I stay on the screen here. Oh, now that we all have this folded in half, we're going to open it up. So the fold is facing down. So it's like that fold is facing down. So it kind of looks like a booklet. And we're going to take about two inches of the top of the piece of paper, and we're going to fold that in half. about two inches down. So a couple of guides to look for is that center crease, making sure the two center creases line up and making sure the edges of each side of the paper lines up too. This is where I like using my fingernail again to get that nice sharp crease. So are we all ready to go to the next part? We're going to take this top fold and we're going to fold it in half one more time. We're going to make sure that our two edges line up down here and then our sides are nice and straight. Again, I like taking my fingernail and giving it a nice solid crease. And this is where it can get a little hard. We have to fold this one more time. So we're going to do our best to fold this one more time. That, because it gets a little hard because we are now folding one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of paper on top of each other now with the folds. And we just take our time, get it nice and even on the on that bottom seam right there. Even over on the sides. Get a nice crease. That so it should look something like that. Everybody to that point. Can I see some head nodding? Awesome. So now we're going to flip it over. We're going to turn it upside down on the back side. And this is where it, it'll take a little bit of trying. You might need to hold your finger here to help because this is really thick now. So it gets a little difficult, like she said. If you have a ruler, you could use a ruler by setting it along here to kind of help get that point. And you're going to take each side and fold it back to the center uh, and get a nice straight edge. And we'll do the same thing with the other side and using symmetry, we want to make sure that the bottom part is even. You get a nice straight edge. And once you have that done, you can flip it over again. And we will fold it in half. You might have to kind of fold right up here at the point because it's really thick right there. So this is a good time to make sure that everything is symmetrical. All of our sides are lined up even together on each side. You can see mine's not quite there, but it's pretty close. And then you're going to fold your piece of paper back so the end goes down past the, the bottom part of your paper. 
you can kind of choose how big you want it to go and how much of an angle you want on your own. All right, you're going to fold it. And then once you have that done, you can flip it over and you want to just line up this side of the wing with the other side of the wing. So you see how I'm lining up the two edges right, to make sure that everything looks symmetrical. Sam, can I ask a question quick? Sure. So when you fold it over, I was looking at your fingers there at the point of your airplane. Do you fold yep. it all the way? Yes, you fold it all the way down there. Or you, yeah, you fold it left? all the way down to where this paper is creased. And you're not going to get past this point anymore okay. because there's way too much paper to fold. Yep. Now we're done, right? We have this plane built. Or are we forgetting a step? Is the plane built now, or do we have one more step to do? You can either unmute or you can type it in the chat. We have to, <clears throat> we have to fold the wings. We have to fold the edges of the wings. Good job, Tristan. Yep, we have to fold the edges. So we're going to come back about a half an inch. We're going to take kind of a guess, and we're going to fold the edges of the wing back about a half an inch. We have one side, and then you'll flip it over, and you'll want to make that even again so we're symmetrical. So we want to make sure that our folds are even. And now when we bring it up, we can bring our edges up. And a good way to tell if it's if everything was even, if you look on the back side of the plane now, you can see, is it the same length from here to that edge and from there to that edge uh, to let you know if it's the same, if it was pretty even. And if it's not, the plane's going to do something. If it's even, the plane's going to do something else. But that's where you guys get to be the test pilots and try to figure out what's going to happen. So we should try? I think we should try it. Erica keeps getting things. Her keeps it coming back. She's like the boomerang expert there. I just lost mine. Mine went behind my bookshelf. <laughs> I have another one I made earlier I can try. There you go. Tyler, he's getting his back. He's got the boomerang. He's the second boomerang expert there. Mine was very, very, very bad. It curled and then crashed. Okay. Did anybody's plane not fly straight? So you can see on this one that I made earlier, and it might be a little bit hard, uh, that this is not even. This side is much shorter than this side here. So when I try to throw this, it's going to do something really wonky. It's going to turn really sharply and come right back at me. We've got some different one said theirs flew straight. Another said it did a loop-de-loop. -loop. Another one said it threw. Tristan said his went straight. Patterns there, Sam. So, does anybody know on a regular plane what parts of the plane will actually make the plane turn and do aerobatics? What those what those flaps on a wing are called? Thank you, Anybody know? 
So those are called ailerons. There you go, Brian. Bradley it was just a second too fast. Uh, so if you want to take this further, I'm going to challenge you to create ailerons on this plane. Uh, so what you can do is you can take a scissors and you can cut out and you want to make sure they're the same length uh, and create a fold on the back side of the plane here and do it on each side. And you can tip them both up in the air. You can tip them both down and you can tip one up and one down uh, to take this further to experiment how how those ailerons will change the flight of your plane. So let me challenge them, Sam. If anybody likes a video, try what Sam just suggested. Do a video and send it back to us so we can see how your plane flew with the ailerons as, as you modified your airplane. Now, if you want to grab a paper clip and a rubber band, uh, and when you're done, I want you to hold your paper clip up in your picture so that way I know that you have your paper clip. But we're going to use the dart plane that we made today to 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 uh, use for our launcher. So you're going to take your dart plane and just set off to the side for right now. Then we're going to take our paper clip and we're going to there's a bigger loop on your paper clip and a smaller loop on your paper clip. We want to take towards the smaller end and we want to bend that out straight so it will look like this. Bring it a little closer to the camera, Sam. Oh, it's going to shake. Oh, that helps. There we go. So you want it to look like that's why I put the green paper on too, so that way we can see contrast. So you want it to look like that. And then once you have that done, you're going to take the small end and bend it straight at a 90, 90 degree angle. So it will look like that. We take our paper airplane dart and we're going to turn it upside down and we're going to kind of open it up a little bit too. And this is where we get to experiment again and have some fun. So you, you're going to take the paper clip and you're going to decide do you want to have the launcher ring towards the front of your plane, towards the back of your plane, or right in the middle. Then you're going to take the, the flat end for the end that's just a 90 degree angle, and you want to poke it right in that main crease. So you're gonna poke it right through the paper, Sam? Yep, you're gonna poke it right through the paper in the, in the main crease. And you're going to feed that through. So if you flip it over, you'll see it will look like that. And you're going to bring it back through until you have your hook. You're all the way to your hook. Then you're going to take the pointy end and stick it back through the bottom, so it will look like this. Another way to look, if you have your support guide, yet yeah, there's a DIY paper airplane launcher or on the index. If you click on that resource too, it shows some really nice up close pictures on what we're doing too. No, 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 no. Can we get mom, can we get mom now? Once we have that and this is sticking up, and we're just going to bend it back to towards the plane, so it kind of locks itself in, so the paper so the paper clip can't move back and forth very much. Notice we didn't share this these or these pictures in the guide, but ask your parents. There's an email with the index, and it has a link to a DIY paper airplane launcher. And it shows these steps that we're doing with the paper airplane up really close and personal. So that way you can see those pictures too. And that might help you guys too. You're going to take your rubber band and put in your two fingers. I'm going to go a little bit quicker because we're already five minutes over our time. And, and we're going to hook our paper airplane with the hook on one of the rubber band pieces. We're going to start off with that. And you're going to pull back. So it will look something... Like that. Okay. And you're just gonna watch it and let it go. If you notice mine fell because mine hit my finger. So you might need to make sure that your fingers are out of your way. Uh this but we'll let you guys try these at home in the guide. There's 
there's uh it talks about paper airplane launchers and again there's that uh, diy paper airplane launcher with some different launchers and you can use cardboard and some paper clips to make a bigger launcher so if you think like the air force and that or well i guess not the air force the navy has aircraft carriers got the wrong branch of the military there uh so that's what you're doing so you're using you're making a launcher like off the off an aircraft carrier does this look good yep okay So again, we'll challenge you. Try to, if you've got a parent with a phone or a video, take a video of you launching, either throwing your dart or your, your hunting plane or using your launcher. Take a video, send it to us. Show us what, what you've done with your the different things that you've done tonight. All right. So I'm going to move us on. Like Sam said, we're over time just a little bit, and I want to make sure that we respect your, your time. So next time, we're going to be learning about Bernoulli's law and the lift. And so if you have a hair dryer at home, if your mom or dad have hair dryers, if you can ask them to borrow that, we're going to need a hair dryer. And the other thing, we're going to do an experiment with the CDs and the bottle um, tops. And so if you have either a hot glue gun or some glue, um, that type of thing, it could be super glue, that type of thing. Um, have that with two. So next time we'll need two things, um, a hair dryer and a hot glue gun or a Elmer's glue or super glue type thing. So make sure you have that with for next time. And we'll put that in our email reminders as well. All right. Any questions about next time?